How's everybody doing? The regular council meeting for Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024 is called to order at 7.03 p.m. We're first gonna have um, a moment of silent meditation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Much, Madam Clerk, my piece of roll call. Roll call, Mayor Nickerson. Here. Vice Mayor Perla will not be in today. Councilperson Urbaum. Present. Councilperson Lightfoot Ward will not be in today. Councilperson Martin. Present. Also present for the record, Janice Jacoby, Village Clerk, Christy Alou, Village Manager, and the attorney. I'm not sure if he's coming in or he's running late. I think he's running late. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. I appreciate it. Um, right now is good and welfare. Um, because our attorney is running late, I usually use the first good and welfare for agenda items only, but we'll do good and welfare all around right now um, because our attorney is running late. So let's do good and welfare um, all around and just get it out the way. So if anybody wants to come up here and talk about anything at all, anything at all, you have uh, about three minutes to do so. You guys know I don't really keep time, but you can come up, say your name and address for the record, and the floor is yours. Just come up to use this podium right here for me, please. Oh, did I, did I not do that? Oh, uh, motion, uh, I'm trying to get through. Motion, motion to approve the agenda. So moved. So <laughs> moved by uh, uh, Councilperson Irvine, second by Councilperson Martin. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed say nay. Hearing none, the uh, agenda is approved. Uh, sir, you can come up now for good and welfare. I'm trying to get through this, y'all. <laughs> Hi, this is Charles Winters, 377 Northeast 85th Street, El Portel. Uh, I um, have been, at the request of some of my neighbors, wanted to share some stuff with the council. Um, my neighbors I'm talking about are the ones in Sherwood Forest that are around the mound. We have um, an issue that the, um, the area around the mall, around, around the mound is degrading. There's potholes being formed in the streets. There, the, the surface itself is eroding, and we have bald spots all over the mound where erosion's happening, and they, we're losing um, property on the mound. The mound is historic, and it needs to make sure that it doesn't eventually wait, weather way to be ground level again. I actually, I brought some pictures very quickly. Um, you need to speak when you're on the mic because it's being recorded and she cannot hear you. Can you not? So there's a, a dozen pictures here of basically bald spots all over the mound. And the actual, uh, I guess, road that goes around it. Um, I'm driving through these potholes every day as I drive into my own home. And I know my neighbors are as well because I've had these discussions plenty with them. Uh, now, I do understand that growing grass underneath an oak tree is very, very difficult, and that there's oak trees all around the mound. I also understand the oak tree roots destroy the ground. But um, recently, I had code enforcement come to my own home, right next to the mound, and cite me for not growing grass, and also cite me for the same exact deterioration of my own driveway that you see here on your uh, city streets. Um, I'd like the council uh, to consider uh, fixing the code. Uh, we need to address it with your code enforcement meeting people and all those that are in charge of this to um, have the same exact rules for our village as we do for our um, citizens. Yeah, um, I agree. Everybody should follow the same, should abide by the same rules. Let me say this really quickly, um, though, as far as the mound goes with the grass. So the mound, um, there's a lot about the mound that I think that uh, what we need to do is like an education um, town hall, Madam Manager, Madam Clerk. So with the mound, first of all, like um, in, in 
for example, and I'll get to the grass in a second, but for example, there's one part of the mound where there are some like flowers growing. Um, if you're facing north, or I think to the right, to the east side of the mound, like those shouldn't be there. So, so when this administration started, um, we implemented like an archeological dig program, basically. So they come out uh, a couple times a year. And what they told us was, was that nobody should be on the mound anymore, um, that, that nothing's allowed on the mound anymore. So for us, I don't even think we have permission now through the archeological program to even go up there and, and replant grass side uh, anymore. Um, it's a dig zone now. And so it's, now we have to abide by newer rules because it is historically protected now um, to the fullest extent. So we really can't even touch the mound. Um, nobody's supposed to be on it anymore, standing on it anymore, of course, parking or anything else. So as far as beautification of the mound, we have to be really careful about that. Um, as far as the street, I, I, I agree with you when it comes to the street and I'm looking at these. The problem is, is that um, these aren't potholes and, and, and- I didn't give everyone the same photos. Oh, okay, okay, so, oh, so now everybody sees what I see. Yeah. The problem is, is that these aren't necessarily potholes. A lot of these are street repair, mm -hmm. which if there were potholes, it'd be, it'd be a little bit different because um, potholes are easier to take care of because we can just bring people out, they fill it up with the black, you know, um, and then they, they cover it up. But when it's not deep enough to be considered a pothole, then it, they put it into street repair. And street repair would be something. This is my, mm -hmm. this is my own property and the exact same yeah. degree that you say in the streets is on my own property. And yeah, that's the exact same thing. Exact same, and I'm being cited for it by the El Portel government. Now, I do plan on fixing it. I don't think it's very fair that I have to fix something and you guys do not. Now, I understand we don't have the money for this. It's a very expensive thing. Uh, there's for the street repair aspect. For the yeah. street repair aspect. I mean, you could always annex it to me and my four neighbors <laughs> and we will take care of it. And I will pave it myself. Um, but I don't yeah. think you guys are going to allow that. Yeah, this is what I suggest you do because unfortunately the um, code enforcement officer is not here today. I know we have the code enforcement chair here um, and he might want to speak on this. But what I would say, suggest that you do is exactly what you told us here, like you don't think this is fair with the photos. Um, I suggest you send an email um, to the code enforcement officer, the code enforcement chair, uh, chairperson Urbom. Um, and, and, man, and manager Lou, you can CC me also and just send the photos, say, look, you know, this is what I'm being cited for. This is what your own street looks like. I don't believe this is fair for these reasons, this, 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 and that. And I, spent, I, I spent two hours with the code enforcement officer today in a meeting. And, and what came of that? He says that we are required in Sherwood Forest to grow grass no matter what, whether planted, and seeded or something else. Now, I can't grow grass. I know you can't either because no. that green part of the hill is actually not grass, they're weeds. Yeah. The entire hill is filled with weeds. I can put weeds in my front yard if that's allowed, but he told me I cannot plant any other plants there to take care of the lawn aspect of the swale. Mm. It has to be grass, and this is not possible, but he says there's no way around it. I have to grow grass, and every time it dies, I have to re-put grass there in my front yard. Yeah, I don't know, like I said, he's not here, so he's not here to speak for himself, but. Um, well, he knew it, I was coming today, yeah. so he was not gonna show up. Yeah, well, well I don't know, but I know that we've never, so, so this, this, is, this is sometimes what happens. We've never forced anybody and said, you have to buy grass, um, but what happens a lot of times is that since people in certain areas can't grow grass, then they'll put something else instead of the grass. And what happens a lot of times is that that other item is not allowed per, through the code. But we've never told anybody, you have to buy grass and put grass down um, there. I don't, so I don't he is he, saying that 100%. I even showed pictures of my neighbor's property. I said, I'll put these plants here or these plants. I'll put all these native plants that will fit and actually grow in that spot, but grass doesn't grow. He says, no, Miami-Dade Code states that you must have a lawn, and the lawn is defined as grass. What do you have there now? I have uh, mulch made from a tree on my property that died, so it's naturally from that area. What are you, what are you, being, what are you being cited for, the mulch? 
I'm being cited because I do not have grass in my swale. Mayor, if I could. Um, yeah, um, go ahead, uh, Chairperson Urbama, then I know Attorney Geller wants to say something, then I'll, I'll come back and say something. How you doing? Hi. Um, so, uh, so this is another example of where our village has a unique situation and many parts of our code are defaulting to county, right? So uh, from the top here, in terms of the health of the mound, I think, for example, it might be like over cleaning, over landscaping that is not allowed like detritus to settle on the mound over many, many years and keep adding mass to the mound. And so with every heavy rain, we're getting more material that washes away. So it's my understanding that the village absolutely, essentially has a mandate to look after not only the mound, but that area in general. And so I uh, don't believe we have anything in terms of signage or any type of restriction whatsoever in terms of actually accomplishing keeping anyone off of the mound. I'm assuming people still go on the mound frequently. Um, is that correct? I've actually um, sent him a few texts when people park their cars on top of the top of the mound. Right. And thank goodness you guys changed the sign out where you can now read it. Yeah. You need to put a sign on the other side because people and keep even, parking there. And honestly, I believe it would need some type of uh, barrier, even if it's you know a two foot something or other, specifically to keep wheeled vehicles off of, uh, or specifically motorized vehicles off the area, but people in general. So this needs to be um, addressed certainly, but. Um, uh, I definitely agree that it would be borderline, I mean, impossible, insane because of the impossibility to require someone to grow anything, honestly. Um, that sounds maddening. Um, and so if that's what our result is in a, we're trying to put more canopy in other parts of the village as well. So there will be other parts of the village at some point that move away from grass and the swale because they have that now because they have full sun exposure right now. And if the canopy increases in that you know, part of the village, then you're gonna lose grass in that section too. So I think the era of trying to um, uh, will landscaping into existence might be over in the face of specifically climate change, the increased rainfall we're getting, um, and the fact that because of the, what we do essentially is, 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 uh, is clean too much. So we're not allowing enough natural material to, to repopulate the mound with mass, right? So um, it sounds to me like the village is two steps behind on taking care of this area. And, um, and, and so that's my, that's my takeaway from this. And in terms of the um, citations, I'll certainly email the manager and, uh, and find out what recourse, you know, review what happened in the magistration process, it looks like today, is that right? Um, and um, and uh, see what we can accomplish through that communication. I think what's really important with uh, the laws that have been applied in the past is they had an intended purpose. And it is written inside of your laws, uh, the code enforcement of Miami-Dade, the purpose of the grass was to stop erosion. By myself putting down the actual mulch, my purpose was to stop erosion because I've had a lot of erosion because I've had nothing but sand. It's not even soil, it's sand. Um, and then when the trees let down their leaves, we have about a half to foot of, of, of leaves every six months. And uh, doesn't allow obviously grass to grow there, but also I've seen a lot of erosion. I've watched the mound in the last 10 years shrink from where it was when I first saw it. Attorney may, may, oh. or, or Madam Manager, Madam Manager, go ahead. I'd, I'd like to because I can speak to um, those two items as well. Um, just to piggyback with um, what Councilperson Urbom said and you, Mayor Nickerson, the um, n the Indian Mound. I, we met this afternoon too, and I appreciated you know your issues, and I explained you know our frustration as well. As we know, the um, Sherwood Forest is uh, uh, designated an archaeological zone. So no digging is allowed. So signage would never be put up there because you can't dig a deep enough to put a sign in that would be sustainable there. Um, the village did with um, the county archeologist go door to door and distributed flyers about what was allowed in that area. But this was two years ago, or maybe it was even more because I think it was before the pandemic. I've been so, there 10 years and haven't received a flyer from an archeologist. Well, we also have the flyer on the village website and it gives you a you know it's a q a it'll give you information but perhaps it's time for us to circle back on that like mayor nickerson said and had just some meeting for 
those residents in the area because we also are asking people to help us make sure no people aren't on the mound, aren't using it, aren't, you know, because we need, you know, our local eyes on it as well to help us um, enforce that it's a um, no dig zone, no planting, those kinds of things. So we'll work with you on that um, in, in sharing that information about the historic preservation of the mound. Um, we have uh, had some design done by a landscape architect for the mound. Uh, it is very expensive and we just don't have those funds right now. So we put that as well as the um, Triangle Park, the Sherwood Forest, we put that on hold for now because you have to have an archaeologist present for every or any um, construction or demolition or any work related, even planting for those two parks. So those are on hold. Um, until we can, you know, find some kind of funding to restore. Um, in terms of the contiguous landscaping, the lawn, we did have a, I, I, Sally, I was ill and wasn't able to make the meeting, but the Planning and Zoning Committee on July 9th was presented a proposal from our urban planners for a code amendments. In those code amendments, one was asked, um, actually it's number two, to define common law um, because it is defined as lawn in the village and the code enforcement officer has been using, using Miami-Dade County's definition but it does not fit the El Portel landscape. You know, it's not the reality of a lot of areas in the landscape of El Portel. So I know that that proposal was very expensive. I think we'll have to try to figure out how to separate the other items we want out from that but it is something that we're dealing with in the administration continu continuously because we have some issues with flooding and landscape and growth on the east side and other areas as well. So you know, I, I, I hate this has happened. I know that Mr. Simmons, our code officer, when he's called out on a complaint, he has to respond. Mm -hmm. And so when he came to your property on another matter, he saw the other code violation and code violations and was required to give you the courtesy notice. Mm -hmm. So you're not in a citation at present, but you got a courtesy notice. So we're committed to try to fix in this issue, and I know the council is too, because they heard that um, proposal, but maybe what we need to do is find a, a less you know, expensive format of making this code amendment for the village, but something that addresses our residents' needs as well. Thank you. Turn you go. And just to follow up on what the manager says, and she used the key words, code amendment. So our code enforcement officer has to enforce the codes that we have. But that doesn't mean we can't amend our code, as the manager references, to be more flexible in terms of our immediate situation. It's not his fault. He, that's his job. but working with the administration and we just need to be comprehensive about it. We don't want to do it, you know, halfway, but we need to come up with something that does reflect the realities of the current situation and that will give some more flexibility to the code enforcement officer that instead of saying it's got to be this one size fits all, it's got to be lawn, as uh, the chair of uh, code enforcement said, we can come up with some alternatives that are permissible in view of what the ongoing situation is, the council can adopt that and amend the ordinance, and then that's what the code enforcement officer would be enforcing. And then uh, this is a little out of my sphere, but just in listening to the other discussion about the mound, if we can't put a sign on the mound, but it, it may be possible where it's not mound is it something that we could put some kind of barrier that would prevent motorized vehicles from driving onto it? Um, and, and that way just, you know, outside the mound itself, but just not to allow a, a car or something to drive up there? I mean, it might be, I don't know if that'll work for a motorcycle, but at least we ought to be able to, to do something that would keep a car from driving onto the premises, would, would that work? No, I don't think there's enough room. So as soon as you get off the mound, you're like in the street already. Yeah, so. Um, so um, but this is not much longer. Something I, um, one of these pictures. Pardon? 
That's my four-year-old. She just turned four last week. There Happy birthday, Snow. There's a picture I just gave to him of one of the trees on the mound, and you notice the gigantic branch is sitting next to the tree. That branch is about eight or 10 feet long. It's been sitting there for a month. Okay, now, we'll get it clean. But the lawn guys that you have coming there to the actual mound, have just, they just drive around the gigantic branch. They don't actually move it. The notice the tree that is on there, do you see that hole in the side of the tree? That hole is under the tree roots. My daughter can crawl underneath that tree. There's almost nothing holding that root tree up. Mm -hmm. Basically, there's maybe two roots that go out. One sneeze from a hurricane, and that tree's on my house. Now, this is, understand a financial thing. We're working on the, 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 uh, the mound is a, is a financial burden. But once it falls on my house, whose burden is it then? What? You don't know about that? Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, you'll be talking to the manager. Um, when it comes to any things, when it comes to the trees, you know, we have arborists, we have individuals that go out there and look and see the health of the tree and see what can be done, you know, with the tree if it has to come down. Um, I met the arborist and I pointed out the tree. I showed them my own arborist report on the tree. Mm -hmm. They. They said, oh, these trees all have holes inside of them. That's normal that they only, but half the roots are a road, meaning the actual paved road is where the roots yeah. are supposed to be. And so the, half the roots have been cut off. Yeah. There's a hole underneath it, and it's only being held on by a few roots into the mound. Yeah. So we can have our arbors go back out there. Um, and, you, and a lot of people need to understand also is that when we do work with our arborists, we also work with Durham. So it's not just like any old like arborist, it's an arborist and we also work with Durham. So it's the most official arborist that you can have. So It's only official until it falls on my house. I remember, I've had two oak trees fall on my house in the last 10 years. I'm very lucky. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, get, <laughs> we'll, we'll get somebody out there to look at that. Yeah, and we, we really appreciate you bringing it to our attention. But in addition to that, I do want to tell you the last planning and zoning meeting, we spoke about a way to tackle those code amendments in a way that is also is financially feasible for the village, but also tackles some of our uh, more problematic areas. And I know that we've heard from residents of Sherwood Forest that there are just a lot of things in that code that do not, are not feasible for that area. And I think the thought is to enumerate you guys out as it relates to some of those trickier issues. So we're looking at it, and I do think you should take some encouragement in the fact that this is a courtesy notice and we're aware of the issues. So you're aware, we're aware, but you're not currently being cited. So but if I you could be. just be a little <laughs> patient with us while we iron out those issues, I think you'll be happy at the end of it, okay? That sounds nice. Yeah. Yes. And, and you got, you know, you're, you're here with, uh, you know, the mayor and the two most important individuals for these items that everybody's talking about, which is the chair yeah, of code enforcement and the chair of planning and zoning. So Good. between all this, uh, that's everything that you need. Yeah, we'll figure it out. But continue the lines of open communication. We want to hear about the tree. If you think it's an issue, of course, you have a little one. We, we want you to be here and, and letting us know. And you don't have to wait for a council meeting to do that. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely send us emails and let us know as the these issues arise because you're there every day, you know what's going on, and we can probably help you find an expeditious solution that re doesn't require you waiting for a month to get in front of us. So just send us an email when you can. But these issues you've cited, we've notated them, uh, are actively working on some. I don't want to lie to you and make you think that this is a quick solution, but it's something that we are looking at how to get those code amendments done. Um, in a way that's financially feasible for the village, okay? And financially feasible for me too. Well, I don't know about your pockets, but <laughs> well, I, I, you, I do know about the villages. Well, did you want to let me know something? told me that I have to lay down sod, and then after it dies, I gotta lay down again, and I from, just have to do that for the rest of my so life. So I will say this, I will say this. Uh, so the manager said that it's a courtesy notice, so I'm assuming that there's no active citations being lobbied, well, not yet. Yeah, and, and you're, you're in this forum and you're speaking to everyone and we're all kind of saying, hey, we get where you're coming from and the intent of the village is not to nickel and dime anyone, right? And we understand that there's an issue as far as like some of these blanket policies and how they're 
executed based on area. So if it were my guess, I would think that you're probably not going to get a citation, so your, your pockets are, are safe on this one. Other ones, I don't know, you have a four-year-old. There's a lot of things coming down the pipeline. School, daycare, yeah, all Lots. the things, all the things. I have a four-year-old as well. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I have a four and a five year old, but uh, two wild boys, so I don't know if she, she'll tolerate them. But yeah. She's wild. Okay, I believe wild. it. So we, we should get them together. Absolutely. But but no worries. We, we understand where you're coming from um, and just work with us while we try to figure out yeah. the, the situation. Wonderful. And, and, okay. and write an email for, like, write an email about the tree if you haven't done so already. Write, like, write an email to um, the manager. Um, so that we can get moving on that stuff. Like we need the email, we need the trail, we need that official, like the, uh, we need those okay. documented. All I'm right. trying to focus on the most important issue right now, which is my own pockets, but I, I will write you an email. Yeah, safety, safety of snow is always a, a, a priority also, so. My, my house has already survived two oak trees that were like yeah. 60 feet tall yeah. and like 80 feet wide falling on the house. So yeah. Yeah. I think if someone falls on it, we'll survive. We just, no, another, but it, another it's not take, it takes five years. Write an email so we can get started on that. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thank you, Mr. Winters. All right. Thank you very much. Who's next for good and welfare, you guys? Good and welfare. Anybody for good and welfare? Come up, say your name and address for the record. Marilyn Brooks. 400 Northeast, 90th Street. I must first say that I had some problems. I called and I left messages for the mayor and the chief of police to see if I could get any help. I'm sad to say that I was ignored by both. I guess I do not pay taxes, or I don't live here, or it's not worth it. Anyway, that's not my reason for being here now. My reason for being here is, of course, another problem which sort of proved, again, that I don't live here. Several years ago, the village brought in an ordinance that because of the danger with these guns and stuff, we were not supposed to have firecracker in the area on holidays. It was terrible because I used to leave my house and go to a friend in Miami Shores because I live alone and I didn't know the difference of a gun to a firecracker and I was scared. But finally, you all came in with no firecracker around holiday time. Well, I'm here to tell you, the 4th of July was ridiculous. The 4th of July, I was in my living room as usual, and around 9 o'clock it started. It was so bad that my very house, when they go boom, my house was shaken. I believe that as villagers, we're entitled to know when you all change your rules. I am not saying you can't do it, because you all do whatever you want to do. But if you do, I think we are supposed to be informed so that we can know how to prepare and provide ourselves. I kept calling. I, I called because I called, but I didn't expect to get anyone. No one answered. I called downtown, no one answered. I wanted to know what was going on. Call you all, no one answered. I would suggest, strongly suggest, that when, if and when you all change your rules, we should be informed. Maybe others were, but since I'm a nobody, nobody informed me. I was not told. I have a neighbor right there, when I spoke with her, she also said she was not informed, and she lived in the other block. Please let us know, since we have to plead. I get a tax receipt, so I do pay taxes. And I'm demanding that when you all change your rules, for whatever the reason be, please notify us 
We are the reason you all are there. If you don't know, let me tell you. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna to respond to a few of these things. So first of all, um, with, uh, with Ms. Brooks, we'll talk about the firecrackers, we'll talk about uh, changing the rules. So no rules have been changed. Um, I've been on this uh, council for almost 15 years. I do remember something about fireworks a few years back, but I don't remember the exact language. So I don't remember, and I can't speak on, if fireworks were outlawed. I don't think that was the ordinance. Um, I will look back and find the ordinance and get the right language for that, but I do not, I have, I do not remember being voted on that fireworks are outlawed in El Portal, but I'll look. But that's, that's not true. Fireworks are not outlawed in El Portal. As far as um, me getting a phone call, that was months ago. So that had nothing to do with, you didn't call me for 4th of July. No. No, okay. That was months ago. And so the reason why um, a little while I didn't get back to Ms. Brooks for that was because going back years, whenever Ms. Brooks would call me, I'd always be there. It could be 12 midnight, it could be two in the morning. I answer the phone. All of a sudden, out of nowhere one day, I get a voice message where she's cursing me out. Out of nowhere. You better get your ASS to my house. I pay taxes. So once I got that message with her cursing me out, I didn't respond. That's absolutely correct. In that message where she was using curse words, I demand a meeting with you and the chief. So, so, I respond to individuals that treat me with respect. This is a place of business. And if you speak to me disrespectfully, I don't respond to that. So that's how that goes. Anybody else for good and welfare? All right, hearing, seeing none. Moving right along. Consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Moved by Councilperson Urban. Do I have a second? Second by Councilperson Martin. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Moving along to the resolution. Attorney Geller, if you want to read that resolution to the record for us. Yes, sir. Item G1, resolution. A resolution of the Village Council of the Village of El Portal, Miami-Dade County, Florida, determining the village's proposed millage rates as required by section 206, I'm sorry, 200.065, Florida statutes and setting the date, time, and place of public hearings to adopt the tentative and final millage rate <clears throat> and budget for fiscal year 2024-25, directing the village clerk and the village manager to file this resolution with the Miami-Dade County property appraiser authorizing the village manager to change the budget hearing dates if necessary providing for incorporation of recitals and providing for an effective date. And Mayor, we're required to read the rolled back rate into the record. Absolutely, uh, and we can say the budget hearing um, dates also, Attorney Gillis. Yes, um, if this, let me see this here. The rolled back rate is, the current rolled back rate for the current year as computed pursuant to section 200.065 is 7.0257 mills. That's $7.0257 per thousand dollars of assessed property within the village based on a total taxable assessed valuation of $308,737,677. The proposed millage rate is 18.14% more than the rollback rates, the rollback rate, and the schedule of hearings. The first budget hearing is scheduled for September 9th, 2024, that's a Monday, at 7 p.m. here at Village Hall, and the second budget hearing is scheduled for Tuesday, September 24th, that's to adopt, the first one is to adopt the proposed millage rate and tentative budget. The second budget hearing is to adopt the final millage rate and final budget, and that's scheduled for 6.50 p.m. 
on Tuesday, September 24th, prior to the next regular Village Council meeting. Thank you very much. If there's no questions or comments from the council, um, can I have a motion to approve? Before I make the motion, um, just for clarity's sake, um, when reading the declaration of rollback rate, it can sound a little misleading, like the rate is going to increase. You know, um, uh, uh, we're talking about 0 .000. So I don't know if 8.3 was declared at any point while we were just speaking, um, but just so the residents are aware that where the millage rate is falling is 8.3, is that correct? What's, yes. the, what's the question? The millage rate is 8.3, yes, 8.3 mills? Yes, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just wanna be clear because as we read through the declaration of proposed millage rate, it can get muddled and sound confusing about what the result is, so. No, it's 8.3, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we haven't raised, we, we would not raise taxes on the people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, if I have no questions or comments, do I have a motion to approve? Yes, so moved. Moved by Councilperson Irvine. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilperson Martin. Do I have any questions for anybody out there? You guys could? All right. Madam Clerk, may I please have a roll call, please? Roll call. Councilperson Martin. Yes. Councilperson Irvine. Yes. Mayor Nickerson. Yes. Motion passes three to none. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, you guys see right there. Oh, um, I was going to go up and say, you guys see right there my report. Uh, Madam Manager, your report, please. Okay, well, I'll be very brief. My report is on the Village website, but just quickly, I will mention that um, the, the uh, El Patel Police Department is um, working um, vigorously on the uh, speeding and traffic issues um, uh, that we have been facing over the past several months. Uh, just this month, they've issued 371 traffic citations that's 1588 year to date so um, I think they're being very effective where we haven't had that in the past where we haven't had traffic enforcement at, at this level um, but that's in um, large part due to um, man, um, uh, Chief Mendez um, identifying and securing some very um, qualified um, traffic uh, officers in uh, Officer Chavez and Officer Severa um, and uh, outside of that, um, the village just continues to work on all of our outstanding projects. Um, we meet um, with other members of the county. I had a, a very um, productive uh, working group meeting with other managers of Miami-Dade County and um, the county um, chief operations officer and um, county department directors on matters related to El Portel and other municipalities, but it was an opportunity for us to really be heard and, and to, um, to work on issues related to transportation, traffic, and what have you. So I will be pursuing an interagency agreement um, per discussion with the um, Department of Transportation and Public Works Director um, Cleckley's um, recommendations and advice, and it's good to have those relationships as we move forward because, as we all know, we get stuck in that 311 cycle or just uh, whoever's answering the phone and then you don't get the responses you need. But we continue to build the relationships we need to advance our, the village's um, interests uh, for our residents. Um, outside of that, I invite everyone to please um, attend the village's budget workshop uh, that will be held on um, the first Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, the first Tuesday of the month of September. That's September 3rd, 2024 at 7 p.m. here at the Village Hall. And if anyone has any questions or concerns, please contact me directly. I am accessible through email or phone call. That concludes my report. Thank you very much, Madam Manager. You guys see my report there. Um, you all have my number, my contact info. If you have any questions, just contact me. Attorney Geller, you have any report? Nothing to report. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. This is the last good in welfare. Um, I just want to say, um, regardless with the, the with the fireworks, if there's an ordinance or not, I know I don't think there's an ordinance. I'm pretty sure there's not an ordinance outlawing fireworks throughout all of El Portal. But if you all ever have any situation where there's noise and stuff like that, just call us up, like call me up, you know, and um, I can get the police over there or call 911, you know, because 
um, even though for you know things like Fourth of July, things like New Year's, there's going to probably be fireworks. Even if they're coming from Miami Shores, where you guys live right there on the border of Miami Shores. Um, but if that's the case, you know, if there's things in your while you're in your, your home that are scaring you or making you, you know, that, that make you feel fearful, um, you know, you can always call me up for situations like that or call 911. We have wonderful officers like Officer Rodriguez in the back right now smiling, and uh, we can send them right over there, you know, just to make sure that you guys are comfortable within your own homes. Um, if there's no other good in welfare. No, I just second that sentiment. Uh, um, yeah, definitely reach out if there is something that you, you don't understand or that is making you scared because you should feel safe in your home. Absolutely, 100%. Um, you want, come, up, come up, say your name and address again for the record and uh, the floor is yours. Marilyn Brooks, 400 Northeast 90th Street. Miami, Florida, 33138. Just to piggyback on what the gentleman was saying, I also have the problem with trees. Now there is a tree that was planted. It was not planted. It just grew up next door to the neighbor's place. But that tree now has become a pest because it has grown like crazy. That tree, let out some fine leaves. That tree has forbidden grass to grow in my area there because it kills the grass. That's number one. Number two, that tree is hanging over my bedroom and it's huge now. I don't know if you all, I, the only thing I'm hearing is when I report it, oh, just trim what's over your side. That can't happen. So I'm waiting for the hurricane because the hurricane is going to help me. <laughs> because if that limb falls on my bedroom, there will be problem. That tree does not belong to me. It belongs to the people next door, whoever they are. That's their responsibility. I have no trees hanging over my house because I never intended to put trees near to my home. I know the danger of having trees. But whoever put the tree, their trees, they're responsible for that. I am a senior, I'm retired. I don't think I ought to take my social security money to cut a tree that doesn't belong to me. And I've shown that tree several times to the code enforcement officer. He has not said anything, but now I'm bringing it in the clear. I took pictures of it the other day because I for, I'm foreseeing trouble. I would ask that you all take a look at it and tell me what ought to be done. That's number one. And number two, with the grass and the mound, what happens if people throw um, things on your mound and kill it? Because that's what happened to mine. I planted grass in my swale. I paid $250 for it to be done. And it's almost dead now because somebody is throwing something on it and killing it. And I just don't have the time, mm. nor the, the constitution, to be bothered with this. Because if somebody's trying to take care of their place, I don't know why somebody would just try to disfigure what you're trying to do. So I just thought I would bring that up to piggyback on what the gentleman said. Because my, my swell, it, it, the grass is almost dead. And I'm not looking to plant anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the first thing I would just say is, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, not everyone can be a, is, is a good neighbor, you know, sometimes. I'm not saying that individual who um, Ms. Ms. Brooks might be referring to is a bad neighbor because I don't know the situation of what's going on over there, right? But, um, you know, sometimes we don't all have neighbors that, you know, have our best interests um, in, in, in mind. Unfortunately, that's just the way it goes sometimes. I w so, you know, for whatever's happening to the grass in your swell, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that it's happening. I don't know what's happening over there. As far as the tree, um, usually this is how that, that situation goes. That's a civil issue between neighbors. Um, in a perfect world, you would hope that, uh, you know, 
that when you go to your neighbor and you say, hey, like, look at your tree, it's kind of growing over. You know, the next time your, your, your lawn service men are here, or when the next time, you know, your tree trimming men are here, can you just kind of send them and just like, you know, maybe cut, cut your part of your tree that's hanging over to my side? And that's how I've always been with my neighbors. And they're usually like, yeah, no problem. Like, oh, Mar, that's, that's, that's no problem. Um, but sometimes they're, they're not like that. So the first thing I would um, kind of ask is, is have you gone over to speak to them? Um, and so that's usually the first step to go over and speak to them and just say, hey, like, can you do this? Then if they refuse to do it like that, it's kind of, it kind of gets difficult from there because it's a civil issue. In the past, um, myself, manager Lou, uh, we have gone to different residences where there have been neighbors that were having these problems about trees, you know, directly. And we, you know, we've gone to speak to the other neighbor and try to come to a, you know, a middle ground between the two neighbors. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but, you know, it, we'll find in our schedule, if you want us to, Miss Brooks, we can come out um, to your property and we can, you know, go to your neighbor's property and talk to them for you and just see what they say. We can, we can do that. We've done that before, so we can do that, all right? So I'll call you, okay? I'll call you and we'll, and we'll make that appointment, all right? Okay. Anybody else you guys? Good. All right. Anybody else for good and welfare out there? You guys good? Okay. Seeing, hearing none. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Moved by Councilperson Martin. Do I have a second? Second by Councilperson Urbom. The uh, meeting for Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024 aye. is adjourned. Aye. Oh, oh, oh. Do, uh, <laughs> all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Hearing none, if it wasn't for you guys and the clerk, I would have been messing with uh, <laughs> with both good, with the good and welfare, with the agenda and everything. Um, the the council meeting for Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024 is uh, adjourned at 7.48. Is that what it is, you guys? 7.48. Good job, you guys. Yeah. <laughs>